Welcome to this guided meditation with Father Mark, your guide for a more intimate and transformative connection with Christ. Please pause, play, and adapt this aid to facilitate your own personal conversation with the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God the Father, I come before you to praise you, to bless you, to worship you, stand in your presence and give you the attention that you deserve, the focus of my mind and heart. In justice, God, I owe you this time. I owe you all my time, all my energies, all my heart, mind, and soul, but Specifically, in this time of prayer, I want to give give it to you in a more focused way. I believe you're here with me. I believe you want to speak to me. I believe that your heart, your mind is available to me in this prayer through your word. I hope in you. I hope in your goodness and your kindness and your mercy. I hope in the love of the power of your son and his resurrected form and his power and glory. I hope that that power and victory will be shared with me, victory over sin, victory over my enemies, victory over my character flaws and tendencies and sins, victory in those good things that I'm pursuing for your kingdom. I hope in you, I hope you will bring about your victory and all those things that you're inviting me to to work on, to grow. And I love you. I love you, God the Father, for sending us your Son, Jesus Christ. I love you for how you've worked throughout all history to bring men and women to you. I love the way you've worked in my own life since I was a kid to develop that relationship, this relationship that we have. I love you for the friends and family and brothers you've surrounded me with. I love you for the thousands of souls that give witness to you, that I'm privileged to accompany, to see, to learn from throughout my whole life and even now. So I love you for those gifts, for all that goodness that you've surrounded me with. It's humbling, Lord. It's humbling how you love me, how you care for me, how you feed me. And so I want to be humble in your presence. I don't come demanding graces. I don't come putting you on trial for how you are or aren't working in my life, not to hold you accountable to something. I just come to adore, praise, bless. And listen to you, learn from you, hear from you, sit at your feet. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for all the good things you've given to me. And I renew that thanks now in this time of prayer. And I want to move now to this gospel of John 6, 52 to 59. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh, drinks my blood, remains in me, and I in him, just as the living Father sent me. And I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. These words always impress me, Jesus. And I'm impressed because they're all in the context of quarreling Jews who don't understand your Eucharist, who 
have difficulty understanding the mystery of you giving your body and your blood for food and drink. And so they're quarreling, they're fighting among themselves, they're trying to understand perhaps, or even pushing back. And yet your response to them is to not retract, but to say an assistant way, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat. You don't have life within you. Like You double down. You don't walk away from the truth. And that inspires me, Jesus. You continue to propose your truth, even when it leads to quarreling and difficulty and hardness and acceptance. Because so many times, Jesus, I find myself in that same position, talking with people about the church, about faith, and where they find it hard and why and why does the church do and say and expect this? And why don't they get with the times? Or why don't they understand? Or that's not going to work. It's not attracting our youth. It's et cetera, et cetera. It's always, or not always, but many times it's humanity's difficulty in accepting the challenge of your word, of your teaching. And rather than, at least in this occasion, showering them with compassion and say, yes, I know it's difficult. Etc. And yes, I understand. And yes, these are challenging times. No, you just say, hey, this is the path to life. Unless you accept it, you don't have life in you. And that's true for, for all of us who preach your gospel, that what we're offering is real life. The truth about the Eucharist, the truth about the gospel, the truth of, of morality, those are all paths to life. Maybe a second thing that I could meditate on, Jesus, is, is your body and your blood as true food and true drink. It makes me think of how many things that I seek that satisfy me that don't. And when it comes to your Eucharist, that truly satisfies. It's really what food and drink are, are meant to do, strengthen and satisfy. And we long and desire for food and drink because our bodies need it to survive. But when it comes to the body and blood of Jesus, it's what I need for eternal life, for ultimate survival, not just in this life, but in eternity. Like what greater food and drink is there than the food and drink that gives eternal living? Not just temporary living, not just food for the next eight hours, but forever. It's like that wellspring of water that will always give water, like that rock that's struck and water flows forth continuously, unending. You are true food and true drink. Your Eucharist, your body and your blood, which is given to us through the sacrament throughout time, that is true body and true drink, true blood. I'm also struck, Jesus, how it says these things were said in the synagogue of Capernaum. Just the concreteness of it, these mysterious words, these challenging words about the Eucharist aren't a myth, aren't like something the church came up with. It's in a real place where you, Jesus, preaching in, in a church, in a synagogue, in a small town, to a small group of people, you gave this message. This is your idea. This is the Eucharist is is certainly foreshadowed in the Old Testament with the sacrificial system and the goats and the lambs and the bread and the altar of sacrifice and the altar of gifts of atonement and thanksgiving and whole burnt offerings, all of that. There's so much foreshadowing in the Old Testament of the Eucharist, but then its sacramental form, the, the form that we practice in Mass and Catholic Mass. It started with you, Jesus, in a church, in a teaching, in a homily, in a preaching. Like our faith isn't a myth, isn't some cleverly invented thing in the Middle Ages. No, it's Jesus. It's the Son of God who lived and rose from the dead, who said, this is what God says. You want to live? This is it. Eat my body, drink my blood. Thank you, Jesus, for that mystery that you reveal. And I humbly and fully 
accept it and praise you for it. And without question, put my faith in your food and in your drink, in your body and your blood in the Eucharist. I'm going to take a moment to formulate a resolution for the rest of this day. And then close up this time of meditation in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This has been a guided meditation with Father Mark Haydu of the Legionaries of Christ. If this has helped you, please consider sharing it with a friend, along with the other meditations, homilies, and talks found on the Legionaries of Christ podcast, located on all major platforms, or go to rcnytristate.org for links.